one man is rewriting the rules and taking it to another level. And the next level, and the next level. <laughs> the seventh level. You just feel how natural it is. You feel how open you become to your prospects. And in response, they usually become more open to you. Founded by Jeremy Miner, Seventh Level is the only friction-free sales system guaranteed to raise revenue. In my life, it's been revolutionary. And his followers are feeling the difference. His training has transformed everything. It is precise, and it really draws out emotions people around the world are starting to catch on we're going to tie in the new model of selling to your product or service that you sell these tools can work for anyone in any industry at any time and it's time to get on board before the ship sets sail it's seventh level with jeremy minor All right, Jeremy Miner. All right, welcome to our Tuesday Live. So every Tuesday we go live, unless I'm on a surgery table, on a plane, to wherever I'm going, we always go live or some, doing something. We always go live every Tuesday with a subject matter training every week, week on week for the last three and a half years. Now we're going live on StreamYard. So we're going live in our Facebook group, Sales Revolution. There's 120 some thousand of you running around in that Facebook group. That thing's growing fast. We're going live in our Facebook business page, about 180,000 of you on that sucker, going live here on our YouTube channel, LinkedIn, and my personal Facebook. Now, if you're brand new, you just sort of follow me. You're like, who the hell is this guy in the Hugo Boss shirts? Jeremy Miner, founder of 7th Level. We are a training, a sales training organization that trains salespeople exactly like you watching me here. So we train sales professionals like you. We train sales executives, sales management, sales leadership, coaches, consultants, you know, home services, doesn't matter, entrepreneurs, business owners. And we train you how to use techniques that work with human behavior rather than work against it. Okay. Some of those techniques we call NEPQ, neuro emotional persuasion questioning. So we have to train you the right questions to ask at the right time, but also with the right tone. We'll talk a little bit about that today. All right. So if you're brand new over here, make sure here's what I'm going to have you do. If you're on the live right now, go because I know you're there. Go down to the bottom of your phone uh, on the comments, whatever channel you're on. And I want you to post hashtag live. So go down to the comments. I'm going to have you post hashtag live. And if you're on the replay, post hashtag replay. So if you're on the live right now, post hashtag live. If you're on the replay, post hashtag replay. I better see a bunch of hashtag lives. We've got answers from Genison. We've got Samantha. We've got a bunch of Facebook users. Streamer doesn't show me what your names are if you're coming from Facebook, YouTube, Tommy Lee, Samantha. All right. A bunch of you, Josh, Terry. All right. So if you're on the replay, post hashtag replay. Now I'm also going to have, because I've got a very unique and special guest that I'm going to be interviewing for you today. He might even be willing to answer some of your questions that you have about sales and marketing. Because who I'm going to interview today, this man is known as one of the best marketers in the world. And I'm dead serious when I say that. Okay. Not many people get that, get that title known as. So we're going to ask him some questions about how to generate your own leads. So if you're a salesperson, how do you even generate your own leads rather than just relying on your company's leads or cold calling all the time that actually sets you apart from other salespeople in your company and in your industry where you just rise to the top and everybody gets pretty damn jealous because they don't know what you're doing that's putting you head and shoulders above them. So very special guest I'm about to bring out. Now, it depends on you. So I better see... Uh, I want you to smash the heart button. I want you to smash the like button. I better see hundreds of smashed hearts and I better see hundreds of smashed likes. If I'm going to get him out of this waiting room, pull him up here and go over and give you some golden nuggets on how you can generate your own leads. And he might even answer questions. So I want you to smash the heart button, smash the like button. Like I said, I better see hundreds of smashed hearts and hundreds of smash likes if I'm going to bring him out here because 
You know, he's a busy guy. I'm a busy guy. I can go out and golf here. It's nice today. It's like 72 degrees here in Scottsdale. I got the I got the uh, the PGA Tour golf tournament. Well, I got the turn, you know, the tournament over here, the Waste Management Classic. I could look at the I look at the 17th hole right over here where I'm at. I just go out there and start golfing. This guy's pretty busy too. All right. Now, post marketing in the chat if you want me to bring out this marketing legend to help you market and learn how to generate some of your own leads. I want you to type marketing in the chat. Let's see how many of you want me to bring him out here. The more I see, the more I'm going to bring him out quicker. I better see a ton. Marketing, you better start throwing him down there. This guy's busy. I'm busy. I better see marketing. All right, we're starting to come here. All right, should we bring him out? All right, here he is. Mr. Stewman, Ryan Stewman, what's going on over there in Texas? Man, I, no, definitely not the waste management open. Was that your house on the intro? <laughs> That was that was my house a, a while ago, yeah, for sure. I had to I had to size, man. You start a company, you got to sell all your assets. What's going on? People think you make a hundred billion dollars a year. Sometimes you don't do that the first couple of years, you know. Yeah, I I, uh, I feel like you probably did, especially if your new place is sitting on the waste management golf course. There's no, 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 this, nothing no, wrong this with are, This is our this is our company offices right here. It's it's the ah. uh, the waste management uh, the the golf location just right over there. You can kind of see it over a. Uh, you can see it over the hill. That's where they play the waste management tour every first part of February. You ever come out for that? Yes, I've never been there for that, but I'm familiar. Like I said, my wife's from uh, Scottsdale, so I spend a good amount uh, of time there. Yeah, that's the I only also got to clear this up. You okay? What's we, going we, on? We've been hanging, we've been hanging out for a minute, and I thought you just had the title boss on your shirts. I didn't realize oh, this was you going. I just thought you were the boss, and so you just oh, bro, boss on your shirt. So. Dude, that would be the most egotistical, like douchebag move for me to put boss. No, it's Hugo Boss. It's a clothing brand. Come on. Man. Oh, so I, man, I, I was I, thinking I, about doing that. I was gonna get boss written on my janitor uniforms. You know what I'm saying? Man. So, I, hey, man, you know, if other people <laughs> think that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get rid of the. I might have to go Nike. I've got a bunch of Nike seven level clothes. <laughs> I might have to go Nike there. Okay, so Ryan, in case like somebody's been living in a cave. For the past like seven, eight, nine, ten years, give us a little bit of your background, and you know, because I know you you're still in sales, right? You got a company, but everybody's in sales if you have a company. But how you got started in sales, and kind of give us a little bit of an overview before we start giving them some of the juice. Well, um, my first like successful sales job was in mortgages, and yeah. um, I actually was recruited from a car wash of all places. I'm just washing cars and. One day a lady's like, you know, you work really hard at washing cars. If you will come do sales for a, a, my mortgage company, I'll train you how to do it. You can make millions of dollars. And within a year, I'd made 700 grand. So she was pretty close to being right. A little bit more than and, car, car washes, you know, washing cars. Yeah, I went, from, I went from 30 grand a year to about 30 grand a month and then 100 grand a month pretty, pretty quick. Yeah. And um, about this was 2004. So this is 20 years ago. Yeah. And in 2005, made about almost $800,000. And yeah. in 2007, this lady passed away. Okay. 2008, I got a job for a different mortgage company. And, and when I worked for the first lady, you know, it was like you go out and you go recruit real estate agents and you I knock doors and people like I would go and drive through a nice neighborhood and people that had for sale signs in their yard, I'd go up and knock on their door and ask them if they were going to use a bank, which is preposterous to think about these days. But that was how we did business before the internet, you know. Yeah. And I went to work for this place called TexasLending.com in yeah. 2008. Okay. And when I went into my cubicle, because we all start from the bottom, no matter how good we are. Yeah. And I went into my cubicle <laughs> and I sat down and within about 10 minutes of my first, like after training and everything day on the job, yeah. They sent me six leads from the internet, like name, yeah. email address, phone number. And yeah. I thought, holy cow, like, wait, you, you guys just send me people to talk to? These that, people that are I'm interested, maybe? <laughs> dude, yeah. It, instead of me trying to knock on doors and go meet complete strangers, these are people yeah. who are like, hey, I'd like a mortgage. It was a game changer for me. Yeah. And I realized that, you know, as, as I was a good salesperson and yeah. I was a, a decent uh marketer in the sense of yeah. knocking on doors and going and visiting random real estate offices sure but man when i realized when when i got an opportunity to marry the two my income exploded exponentially because yeah. now yeah. i could spend my time 
talking to people as opposed to going and getting people, right? Because like before, you're knocking doors, you leave the office, you're not doing loans, you're out there trying to find loans. Now I got yeah. loans coming to me, I can make yeah. even more money, even on a smaller margin, right? Like the, yeah. the ladies company, Monica, I was making 70%. At Texas Lending, I was making 48%, but yet I made more money. Yeah, and so out cold call and you, the leads were coming to you. That makes sense, yeah. The, the other sales guys, they were just taking leads and, and doing their thing. And I wanted to learn how they got the leads. So I went and made friends with the media buyer. I went and made friends with the marketing team. So while everybody else is going and having drinks with other loan officers and stuff, I was hanging out with the media. But like, how do you do this? How do you run a TV commercial? How do you, how do you, what, what makes a good flyer convert and all of these yeah, things? Yeah, right? smart. Yeah. And, and so, because in case they fired me or in case I wanted to go out on my own one day, I wanted to know how they did it. Right. Cause yeah. I, cause I, I, I had got accustomed to this luxury and was not going to go you back to the old one. Right? You didn't want to do it. <laughs> and so in 2010, <laughs> a good friend of mine named Mike Reese gave me some DVDs from a guy named Frank Kern. Okay. And, he, and Mike is a notoriously cheap real estate agent. And, and he goes, he's, he's a big famous realtor now, but back then we were all just working. Yeah. And, he goes, I paid $8,000 for these DVDs. And I went, what? Who the hell pays eight grand for some DVDs, right? Yeah, but yeah. I was so curious when he said that, that I went and I, I watched every one of these DVDs, but I didn't just watch them. I did what they taught. They were how to build a website back in, you know, pre click funnels or phone sites. Like these were like right. how to upload a PHP WordPress yeah. <laughs> template and all this crap. Yeah. And I did it. And I, I wrote this little ebook over the course of a couple of weeks. And yeah, I wrote it like this. I didn't even know how to type back then, right? So I wrote this little ebook and everything else. And I started putting it on, you know, Facebook and I started getting leads from it for my own yeah. business. And, yeah. and I was like, wow, there's really something to this. By the time 2011 rolled around, I was running ads on Facebook way before that was a thing. You know, it was sure. the first, I had to have been the first, if not one of the first, like coaches to be like, hey, if you want to get better at doing loans, like fill out the form below and blah, blah, blah. I've been doing that for almost 15 years and this now. Was, hey, this was when you, you know, this wasn't the golden days of 2002 to 2007, right? This is the markets down. Most mortgage loan officers, they're not making any money. A lot of them are out of the business yet. You're crushing it. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, 2008 when people were, you know, jumping out of windows, dude, I was jumping up and down for joy. We had leads coming in. Yeah. And so, you know, over the years, just consistently hitting the social media and being an early adapter. I mean, I've had the privilege at this point to work with Frederick Eklund and Josh Flagg from Million Dollar Listing. I knew David Goggins and worked with him before he had Instagram. I knew Ed Milet before he had Instagram. Like these are people that, that I've done things for and worked with over the years that, you know, it's kind of got me a little bit of status at this point. And yeah. now I own, I own my own lending company. Yep. And then I own my own software company. Yep. And then we have a pretty large business association of, mm -hmm. of a lot of small to medium, several large, but not a lot of yep. large, but small yep. to medium sized business owners. And we help them with their marketing and their internal sales and their growth and leadership and culture building and things like that. But really mm -hmm. my dancing bear thing for me is I like to make it rain leads. Like yeah. once I learned that stuff in 2008 yeah. to 2010, I was like, oh man, this is addictive because the more leads I get, there's a saying in sales, the more hands you shake, the more money you make. So yeah. I'm like, the more leads I can get, the more opportunities I can get, the more hands I can shake, the more yeah. money I can make. So yeah. that's, that's yeah, basically. And I feel that I, I, yeah. And I think with the more leads you get, the way I always looked at it, the more leads I had, you know, there, the less, the more detached I am from each person I talk to, because I've got tons of other opportunity, right? Now, the less leads I have, if I don't have the right skills, it, it's like you're more attached to the outcome. You're more needy because you know you got less opportunity, right? Would, would I be right? You need the money. Yeah, you need the money. But if I know I've got 50 gazillion other people just waiting next, I'm not as attached which typically cause the prospects to draw in, draw me in more and pull me in more because they feel like, you know, like they're an expert. They're not like so needy. They're not so attached. They're more collective. They're more calm like an expert is, right? So walk us through. So should salespeople, let's say you're a W-2 salesperson or let's say you're 1099, you're working for a company. A lot of salespeople, as you know, are kind of like, hey, I'm just going to have the company give me leads 
And sometimes the company's leads, maybe one month they're up, the next month they're down. So now the salesperson's kind of twiddling their thumbs, waiting on the leads to come. What would Ryan Stuman do if you're a W-2 rep or a 1099 rep working for a company? What would you do in that situation? I'd still do my own stuff. You know, in, in 2011, when I was testing these things, I needed a product to sell. Yeah. So I went to work for a Ford dealership. I'm not like into selling cars. I'm not a car salesman, but yeah. I thought, what if I can go somewhere that's well known yeah. at a Ford dealership and I can go work for them and I'll call their leads and stuff. But what if I could do my stuff? Let me let me test my ability on yeah. their audience and with their product. Yeah. And man, I went out there and made videos on how cars technology work, put it up on YouTube and all this other stuff and everything else. And dude, I became the number one sales guy over there too. So if I was working for a company right now, like if it all went out the window and I had to go start somewhere, I would eat and they were providing me leads. I would try to get better leads for myself than the company provided me. Yeah, because the more leads you have, the less desperate you are. Now, when you say leads, would you do more reels? Would you do more ads? What would you do? Well, first, before you can get into all of that, you got to build a foundation. 99% yeah. of people that don't know what I'm about to say, don't. they're like, well, this is what I hear all the time in our, our sales group. They say, well, my industry is different. You can't do that in my industry. Do you get that sometimes too? Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't yeah, know. Okay. PDPQ will work for what I sell. I yeah, sell okay. XYZ widget. And it's so unique. I'm like, I think, do, do they have problems and or emotional needs? Oh, they do. Does your solution solve this? Oh, it does. Are they human? Oh, oh, oh it probably work then. I, I don't know. Go ahead. Yeah. And most people, they, they, I think they like to believe they're unique. So that creates an excuse of why they can't. Why they can't. Succeed. And, yeah. Right. And, but most people that don't know what I'm about to say, they, they think they can't do something because of what's what I'm about to say. I, the first thing I would do is I would go to Facebook because, yeah. you know, like Instagram's great. LinkedIn's boring. So a lot of people aren't spending their time there and, and Instagram's great, but it's more of an influencer type of world. The, sure. the audience on Facebook is between 40 and 55. That's where yeah. most 40 to 55 year olds go. Yeah. Most people that can afford to buy something, whether it's a nice car, a house, a life insurance, a financial planners, they're in that age range, you know, yeah. insurance, those type of things, yeah. they're in that age range. Yeah. And so what most people do is on Facebook, they have a picture of a baseball team as their profile picture. Or their cat. You know, like they've got, yeah, their cat. They've got the Texas Rangers logo as their profile picture. And what, what people, a lot of folks don't understand is that social media should mirror real life. When you shake yeah. somebody's hand to do a deal with them yeah. and, and you're just meeting them, let's say they walk in a dealership, they walk in your office, people want to look at you. They want to know what you look like. And then they want to yeah. know your name and they want to know where you're from, if you're married, what do you do for a living? Like sure. these are the, this, your Facebook they're, should they're be picking an instant. Up, uh, they're picking up on social cues from you. It's, it's social dynamics. It's uh, what we call social status, right? Yep. Right. They, and, and they, from that point that like your Facebook page should be a snapshot of just those things. One of the, the common mistake is the bad profile picture or their background picture on Facebook looks like an advertisement. Like nobody wants to click and meet somebody and immediately be hit with some sort of advertisement. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. And your business page should be that way. But I like to use my personal page. We generate thousands of leads yeah. a week for yeah. free from my yeah. personal page on Facebook. Yeah. And and you know, uh, here's another mistake people make is you go and you click in their bio and they've got 50 jobs, 20 high schools and 30 cities that they've listed in. Imagine if you just met me and you're like, where are you from, Ryan? And I'm like, well, I lived in Leonard, Texas, Dallas, Texas, Garland, Texas, Irving, Texas. By the time I got to about the fifth city, you'd be like, this guy's a clown. You're zoned out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or, or if you're like, so what's your website? And I gave you 50, you'd be like, dude, what are you, I'm you're confused. gonna look through all that. Yeah. yeah. And so you keep it to one job, one city, uh, mm -hmm. one wife, hopefully, uh, <laughs> or spouse, and, right. and, and one link in that bio, right? Yeah. And I call that like the foundation of what you've got to set up so yeah. that it makes like the instant connection for somebody. Mm -hmm. um, from there, once I've got all that set up, and, and the beauty of this is none of this costs you anything. It doesn't cost you anything to put a picture yeah, of your family. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I learned how to make offers. Mm. Okay. And uh, a great book on offers, if you don't know how to make offers, is Alex Hormozzi's 100 Million Offers. He's a he's a great author. It's a fun book with cartoons and pictures in it for, for those of us that need some entertainment. 
But yeah. you've got to learn to make offers. That was how we made money in the mortgage business. That's still how I make money today yeah. is getting a good offer in front of yeah. a good prospect that converts yeah. to a client. Right? Now I got a question for you because around Christmas time, you and your, I believe your COO, Sean, came to tame to us seventh level and tell us this idea that you had because this was like a week before christmas i'm like oh i know that guy i've seen him on social media the, the hardcore closer guy you guys came to us tell us about the idea that you guys kind of floating around around christmas let's talk about that for a minute because then i want to go back into creating that offers and how to do that well you know i've worked with a lot of sales trainers like yourself over the years a whole bunch of them pretty much all of them okay. and everybody's kind of the same you know they're like this aggressive super confident yeah you know I, I i hate to use this term but it's almost like bully somebody into making a decision let me ask you a question person. and then they start asking the yes. bulldoze everybody yeah. over here okay yes yeah. and then they make you feel uncomfortable you know and and it's like just keep keep agitating them and make them uncomfortable yeah. till they say yes to make you go away this is a numbers game just to get thick skin just accept the rejection i'm like that sounds hard oh gross so Sean and I start saying, Hey, listen, you know, I, I'm, I'm good at sales, but I'm not a sales trainer. You know, that's not what I do for a living. That's not what we, we have a few courses on that, but that's not the bulk of what we sure. do. The bulk of what we do is teach people to market, build businesses. Yeah. Yeah. And so Sean and I start talking, Hey, who's somebody that's that, that we can bring in and introduce to our people yeah. that can teach them how to sell. Yeah. and in a different way so it's not the same old stuff that someone's bringing in here yeah and we made a list of names and we started looking at each one of them and digging into them we're like let's let's go talk to jeremy yeah. and sean knew chad uh one of your guys one of account managers yeah, yeah 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 and he introduced us and we were like let's and let's we want to do an event we want to bring somebody in who's who's not only different but i really liked your style of sales jeremy because it's it's highly aggressive but it doesn't seem like it yeah it's like you know? passive aggressive where the prospect doesn't feel like it's aggressive they actually feel like it's their idea which actually is the highest form of aggression but in a way where they never feel like it's aggressive i, I agree and i bet that leads to a ton of referrals right Probably. when you make somebody feel good about doing business with you they mm -hmm. want other people to feel good too if you bully somebody into doing business with you then they're not going to want their friends to go through that same experience. Or if you annoy somebody into doing business with you, they're not going to send their friends to go through that same experience. And if they do, they're going to go, I'm going to send you to my friend, Jeremy. He's going to be annoying as hell, but he's really good at what he does. Right. You don't want that. You don't yeah. want that frame when yeah. somebody's sending you. Cause then the person is going to is the annoyance value less than what I'm going to, they're running this like, you know, algebra in their head yeah. of whether it's going to work well, out. Most of those people don't even buy, like it, it triggers sales resistance. It's high yes. pressure. All you're going to do, the guard goes up and then you're competing against the wall. So you came to us, you're like, Hey, maybe we should, maybe we should do this event together. And so I, my, my pitch was, you know, Hey, what if you, I believe that when you get sales and marketing together, you can write your own paycheck as much yeah. as you want, whether you own a business or whether you're a salesperson. If you can yeah. master those two skills, a lot of people, they master sales and they're constantly trying to get better at sales and they never do anything with marketing. Therefore, they yeah. never make money. You can be the greatest salesperson in the world, but if you don't got anybody to talk to, you're going to have skinny kids. Exactly. Meanwhile, you can you can be a horrible a horrible salesperson, but a hell of a marketer, and you're going to get in front of enough people to make good money. That's just the facts, right? And, you can and most buy people, both of those. You're up here. Exactly. So I said, hey, let's do an event where we teach people how to get leads. You teach them how to have powerful conversations that are yeah. different than all the other guys out there. Let's yeah. empower some people together. Let's yeah. put on a two-day event. Yeah. And we worked the schematics out behind it, and poof, next week that thing's becoming a reality. Here we are. So type in me if you want to know details of a very unique two-day event uh, that I am doing along with Ryan at Ryan's facility at your event there in Dallas, Texas. In the comments, type in me if you want to know some details about what Ryan and I are actually going to train you because Ryan's 100% correct. You start to learn marketing – and you start to know how to talk to those leads, if you're a business owner, it's like impossible to fail. Like if you are extremely good at marketing, you learn how to market and you're extremely good at sales, 
you can have crappy operations, you can have a lot of crappy stuff, but you're still going to do really well because those are the lifeblood of the business. I know that when I started Seven Level, God, it was like 2018 with my assistant from my job, like literally it was me and Beth, you know, there's me, hey, Beth, right, you know, I didn't know how to market at all. So for the business, the first year and a half, it didn't go anywhere. You know, and everybody that got into the training, the, the few people here and there, like, this is the best sales training I've ever had. I've, I had hundreds of testimonials from pretty much a few hundred clients. And then we started learning how to market. And we started, you know, bringing marketing in and started learning. And all of a sudden, bam, we just shot up like freaking like this. So, like, you know, I think even Cardone says you can have the greatest product or service in the world, but if nobody knows anything about it, if nobody knows who the hell you are, it ain't going anywhere. Right. Yeah. But on the flip side, if you're the a great at marketing, you can have an average product and you're still going to be successful. Right. So type in me if you want to learn details. We're going to have our team drop you a link to this event. It's called Convergence. It's marketing and sales coming together. It's next Friday. So write this down on your calendar. It's actually next Friday in Dallas, Texas at Ryan Studios. Uh, I think your event center holds like 200 some people, right? Uh, yeah, close to 300. Yep. Yeah, close to 300. Yep. And it's by the way, next, a right. lot of those spots are filled just so like if you're if you're if you're really interested, like you need to get in quick because um, yeah. this is the first time Jeremy's made it public. But my team and I have been filling seats for yeah. a couple of months now. So I want to say it's like 80, 85, 87 percent filled. So it'll be gone here. Maybe even after this live. So it's next Friday and Saturday, April 5th and April 6th. We start at I want to say we start at what time in the morning? Nine in the, about 8.30 in the morning, 8.30, 9 in the morning. We're going to go all the way. We say 5.30, but if you've ever come to one of our live events, you typically know it can kind of go a lot later because we. I just like training you guys how to sell more. And I know, I'm pretty sure Ryan likes to train you how to market more to get better leads. So if you're a salesperson, if you're a coach, if you're a sales manager, if you're a sales executive, if you're a consultant who wants more clients, maybe if you're a plumber and you want to bring in more business or an attorney or home services, solar, life insurance, SaaS, B2B, B2C, door to door, we are going to train you how to generate your own leads and then how to actually sell to those leads. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the people who go to that event are probably going to walk out of that event knowing how to generate more leads and actually sell more. I highly doubt they're going to generate less leads and sell less after we train them for two days. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. And, and a big bonus on that guys is becoming a market influencer, not an influencer like an Instagram influencer, but the more you get in front of people, there's, there's a company here in Dallas called milestone electric. Yeah. Electrical is not a sexy business. It's a blue collar business, but, I guarantee you anybody with a TV in Dallas knows who Milestone Electric is. They're the industry influencer here in DFW because they market so much. So, you know, a lot of people, they say, oh, we got to outsell our competition. No, 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 yeah. no. You need to out market your competition and then you become because all we're really trying to do is salespeople, business owners and, and marketers is be the top of mind when somebody needs our product. Somebody needs a car, they think of Park City's Ford. Somebody needs a mortgage, they think of TexasLending.com. Somebody needs electrical, they think of Milestone Electric. That's our job. And then we've got influence because even if we don't win the deal, which you will with Jeremy's training, obviously on sales, but, but even if we don't win the deal, we get first dibs at it because we're the top of mind for them. And, and whether you own a business or you're a salesperson, that's what you want. You want them to think of you first, right? Like somebody yeah. goes on Facebook and they're like, hey, who do you know that does roofing? And then two or three of their friends, they've been seeing ads from Three Kings Roofing. So they're like, hey, check out Three Kings Roofing, Three Kings Roofing. Like those are referrals. That, and by the way, I read a statistic the other day that 78% of people buy from that exact formula. Like 78% of all purchases start with a referral on social media these days. I, I, that's an alarm. I read that Forbes. Yeah. That's an alarming number. But yeah. wouldn't you want to be that person? The way that you get to be that company or that person is by marketing. So not only will you leave here with the sales plan to talk to these leads and the, the, the plan to get these leads, but once you put the two into action over a period of time, then you become the industry influencer forcing the other people, whether they're sales or business owners around you, to have to try to compete to get to your level 
And, and man, that is a very powerful position to hold in any marketplace in any industry. Well, you just dominate. I mean, yeah, I just, I can man, I was like back of my sales car. I made a lot of money as a salesperson. I'm like, man, if I would have added in just generating extra leads, shit, no telling what could have happened. All right. So day number one, let's kind of run through what we're going to cover. So day number one, I'm going to start off and I'm going to talk about the biggest problem in sales is the problem that you don't know you have. And I'm going to talk about different things that you're saying and asking right now that you've been trained. It's not your fault. You're trained that way, but it is your what? What is your problem? And ain't nobody going to come and save you unless you want to learn how to do that. So I'm going to show you certain words you're using and questions you're asking that you think are building rapport, which are actually lowering your status in the prospect's mind where they just view you as just another salesperson trying to stuff your solution down their throat. So I'm going to show you what words that you're using right now that are doing that. And then I'm going to show you tweaks and how to change those words and, and what questions actually change. So we're going to start right there. Now, Ryan, you're up next. You're going to tell, what are you going over next for the next hour? So I'm going to teach what I call the attractive character, you know, mm -hmm. like, like, would you rather buy from a salesperson that <laughs> smells like coffee, has a coffee stain on their shirt and they're all wrinkled and everything else? And, or would you rather buy from somebody who it has fresh breath, they're clean, their shirts pressed, they look good. If you put two side by side, same exact skills, same exact product, everybody's going to go with the cleaner, better looking version. That same thing starts online. That first impression, 78% of people yeah. buy from referrals online, that first impression happens just like that on social media. Someone goes, oh, that seems smart. Then they click on your profile. Profile looks like horrible, right? Then they go, oh, you know, they click on your profile and it's a bunch of rants about politics and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? That they're like, oh, I don't, I don't even want to get involved with that, right? So I'm going to teach you how to become an attractive character that when people do refer you and they click the, the link and they look at you, they're like, oh, he seems like a nice guy. She seems like, a nice look like an expert, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I was marketing yeah. attracts and repels, right? You want it to attract the right people, repel the wrong people. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing, you know, like if I'm a sales trainer, so why do I do a lot of our virtual events and lives from this office? And why do I have about 700? Uh, I've got about 3,500 books. A lot of them are sales persuasion, right? And influence. So why do I have about 700 behind me? Because when people see that, that implies what? That I might be an expert. Well I, might have, yeah. I might have knowledge that they have not attained yet. That might be a good thing, right? It's the same thing. I look at the behind you. You've got a ton of books. Look, I've got too. books too. Ryan <laughs> looks like he might be an expert in marketing. And holy cow, there might be something to that, right? So there's there's some different things that we're going to train you, especially if you sell virtually, even if you sell in person, even on the phone, if they can't see you, okay, especially how to use your tonality, that cause the prospect to view you at a higher status than themselves. That's called situational status. It's, it's something I learned in social dynamics. Ryan knows it for marketing as well. You, it, It's a lot of marketing and sales are the same when you really kind of uncover everything. Like you're, you're building higher status instead of low status, right? Um, a bunch of stuff. Now, next thing we're going to cover. How do you, one of the probably most important things that you'll need to learn as an entrepreneur or any type of salesperson selling anything is how do you get your prospects to let their guard down? where they actually emotionally open up. So I want you to type in me if you ask questions and you, you feel like they're good questions, your company's giving you a good script or you read some questions from some sales guru from a book, you ask the questions, they sound good, but most of your prospects, they give you like vague, generalized, just surface level answers. Type in me if that happens to you. Well, I'm going to show you why that's happening to you. I'm not just going to show you what to do to prevent it. I'm going to explain why that's going on and I'm going to help you tweak your questions for your industry. We train all industries now. We train 160. According to Forbes magazine, there's only 163 industries. That's crazy. There's subsets of each one. Like if you're in home improvement, you might sell garages or doors or windows or siding or, you know, awnings or freaking carpet or, you know, whatever. There's, you know, HVAC, there's a ton of roofing, different things like that. Uh, and we're in all of those now. So we have scripts for pretty much every industry out there from companies and or individual salespeople. So I'm going to show you how to tweak your questions that you're asking, even in the first 10 seconds to a minute. Uh, it could be a cold call, could be an outbound lead you're calling that responded to an ad, could be an inbound lead you're meeting on Zoom or in person in a home 
or at a company. And I'm going to show you certain things to do with your tonality and questions to ask to immediately get the prospect to let their guard down. How many more sales would you make than you are right now? If you learn just that one thing from this event, if you just walked away and only learned how to get your prospects to let their guard down instead of staying surface level, how many more sales do you feel like you could make? What'd you think about that for a second? All right, Ryan, off to you. Then I'm turning it over to you for what? How to create an offer. And I've that. got, just like you have scripts, I have templates for creating offers. Yeah. And like one of my favorite is like how to get X without doing Y. And mm -hmm. X represents, like, it's like offer algebra. X represents what they want. Y represents what they don't want, right? So let's say you're selling gym memberships, how to get six pack abs without dieting or going to uh, exercising an hour a day, you know, this like the, the four hour work week, how to, how to become a millionaire working four hours a week. Right. And so how to make more you, sales without playing the numbers game. Exactly. There you go, I'm learning. Right? So, <laughs> so once you start putting offers together, I have these different algebraic equations of how those work with templates to, to where it can fit you because you know, the offer is where it all starts. The offer draws them in, the digital handshake gets them, Jeremy's sales process closes them, right? That That is the, the full circle of sales life over here. Now, what happens if you don't learn how to create offers? Then it's kind of like what you were saying, you, you, you're going to get a lot of resistance because you're not, you're going to stay at the surface level. Hey, do you want insurance? Right? Like, come get insurance from me. Hey, do you want to buy insurance? Like, no, nobody rolls over in the middle of the night, looks at their significant other and goes, we need more insurance. We need more policy. Yeah. We, yeah, yeah, nobody, we nobody, need a better policy. Nobody you know? thinks need, they're going to die. Right? Yeah. We, we need the rider that they, you know, we need X, Y, Z rider. That's not what happens. You yeah. have to get below that. Like, like I realized when I sold mortgages, nobody wanted a mortgage. Nobody wanted 30 year debt to a bank. Zero yeah. people on this planet wake up, or go to sleep and go, dude, if I could only get 6% interest rate for 30 years, I'd be in good. Like, that's not what it works. They want a house. Yeah. They want a house. Yeah. And, and, and if I could take the mortgage out of that offer and yeah. help them, hey, would you like to get in a house with the cheapest payments available to you? Would yeah. you like to buy your dream home with yeah. the least amount of expenses possible? That's yeah. the offer that they want, right? It yeah, has nothing yeah. you're, to do you're with not, the 6% interest you're, rate. You're or, not yeah, you're not selling the thing. You're selling the result yeah. of what the thing does. The like you're not selling them a mortgage. You're selling them the dream house they want to get in. You might be selling them, you know, moving into a safer neighborhood because the neighborhood they're coming from has got a bunch of gang violence. You could be selling them higher status because now they're making more money. They've got their own business and they want to impress everybody from high school. I mean, that's what you're selling, the results of what well, the house does, the mortgage does. Or they're having another kid and they need a bigger house. Their kids moved away and they need to downsize. Like there's a litany of reasons. Yeah. And so you make offers to attract the right person using these reasons, right? Most people think, oh, well, I offered to do a mortgage for them. It's like, yeah, but they don't want a mortgage. A mortgage is the bridge that they've got to cross to yeah. get what they do want. You know, yeah, hundred percent. They damn sure don't want an interest rate. I yeah. used to watch Jeremy. I used to watch loan officers. I, this is why I crushed them. I used to watch them explain to their clients how the bond market worked with mortgage-backed securities. And by the time these people got off the phone, they're over here trying to do like you know, these mathematical equations of how they could get the lowest rate at the lowest time based on the yeah, now they're shopping. Now, now, they're now they got the for their day traders. You know what I mean? So, so now, they're shop, now they're shopping around and yeah, they just commoditize the guy that was selling mortgages. Yeah, then we're going to get into high-level B2B enterprise. So if you're B2B, I know your spouse is going to be up there. She specializes in B2B. I think I'm going to join her. We're going to talk about yes. how to, how do you, how do you get through gatekeepers? How do you, how do you navigate through an enterprise level company to not only get the, all the decision makers involved, but also the people who influence those decision makers. One thing that I learned going from B to C over to high level uh, B to B early in my career, because those two different ball games. I'm selling to a husband and wife on the doorsteps alarm systems in college. Now I'm selling to like freaking fortune 1000 CFOs, whole different ball game. But I had to learn not just how to get the CFO and everybody around him that would decide on board. I had to learn how to get the people who influenced him on board. They couldn't make the decision, but they could def influence. And they might be, you know, they might be motivated for different reasons. They might look at me as a threat because maybe I'm coming in. And uh, let's say if I sold the uh, cybersecurity, 
and it's the head of their IT department, they might not be able to make the decision to write the check or send the funds, but they can influence that CEO because maybe they feel like you're a threat and now you're going to replace them. Or maybe they feel like the CEO is going to look down at them because they didn't get the job down after they bring an outside vendor in. So they might, even though it solves their problems, they might try to influence the decision makers not to go. So how do you influence the influencers? Would I be right? Yep. All right. Then we're going to talk about building the gap. So how do we take a prospect from what we call their current state, where they are now, to where they want to be. We call that their objective state. We're going to focus on that. And then you're going to talk about, we're going to talk about that. I think that's the end of day number one. What do we cover at day number two? Let's start at day number two here. The day number two, I'm going to start teaching what I call a lead magnet. This, mm -hmm. this is once you have your profile set up and you understand how to make offers, then you need to get those offers out in front of as many people as possible. And I call that a lead magnet, right? Like something yeah. that attracts your prospects to want to become a lead. Um, when I sat down at the mortgage company years ago that generated leads, they had lead magnets everywhere, SEO, TV, mailer, radio, all this stuff. And, you know, it, when you can use a company like phone sites, a software company to be able to generate leads and put your lead out there automatic, then use a company like Google, YouTube, Facebook, to be able to put that in front of a bunch of people, whether it's through paid advertising or organically, then all of a sudden you're attracting leads on a daily basis. What, mm. what would it mean to you guys if you got an extra one to five leads a day, just one to five leads. If you own a business, what about one to five leads per salesperson that you have? But if you're a salesperson, W2, 1099, and you, maybe you knock doors right now, maybe you cold call. What if you had five people reaching out to you every single day that were interested there? They may not be 100% ready to buy. And they may not be like, oh, just take my money. But what if the, what if you had five people that said, hey, I'm interested in what you sell. Tell me more about it. Then you can use Jeremy's sales training techniques to get to those <clears throat> subsurface level needs that they have and then close them. So yeah. that's, uh, that's, no, that's going to be a big too. one. Uh, lead magnet funnels. We, you know, at, at seventh level, we got pretty good at lead mag uh, magnet funnels. We call it self-liquidating offers. We do. We have like six of those. They're always coming out new ones all the time. You know, yep, got, I see your yeah. ads. Yeah, you see the ads, right? So we had the NEPQ black book of questions, the first version. Now we have the second version. I doubled the content, made it a bunch of industry specific stuff. And now it gets mailed out as a physical version rather than just going in the email. I think the first, good Lord, the first day, I think there was like 4,000 people that bought that thing the first day we launched an ad on it. Okay, now we're going to talk about next. I'm going to get into advanced future pacing because not only do I have to help them find problems they didn't realize they have, but that's just half the equation. I also got them to see, get and get that prospect to see what the future looks like once the newfound problems are solved. Okay, what does their future look like? So I'm going to show you some industry specific examples for your industry to get them in that mind of what is my, you know, how does it feel once these newfound problems are solved? Because if they can feel that, that's where they make the decision. See, every decision you make as a human being starts with your emotional side of the brain. When I say that, people are like, no, it's uh, you don't understand. My prospects are all logical. I'm like, well, scientifically, if they're human, it actually is not that way. Every decision starts with, I feel like drinking this water because I'm thirsty. See, I feel like drinking this water and then I justify logic because I'm thirsty. I feel like writing down this uh, phone number because I want to call them later. I feel like talking with Ryan on this interview because we're doing an event together. See, every decision you make as a human being starts with your emotional side of your brain. OK, so I'm going to show you how to trigger certain emotional drivers in every prospect you talk to to help them relive their pain of their situation and have a fear of continued future pain that drives the need for them to change, builds massive urgency. Now, this event somebody just posted in here. This is in Dallas, Texas at Ryan's Event Center. This is next Friday and Saturday, April 5th and April 6th. Now, you're going to talk about content syndication. I'd love to know about that. Hey, real quick, everybody. We, uh, we've we got, I think, three spots left for the VIP portion. We only took, what, 12, Jeremy, VIPs or something like that. It's a very low number. And um, the Friday night, we're actually going to dinner at the Cowboy Club, which is Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones private club like no videos allowed no photos allowed it is a super high-end um 
place that you have to be a member of. <clears throat> I'm a member. I'm one of the founding members. <laughs> and so uh, like not only are you going to get some extra time with Jeremy and I at lunch, you're going to be able to go to this exclusive place that you could never step foot in without somebody like me in your corner. And I'm telling you, you've never seen a place like this before. Like, if you don't know anything about the, the if, even if you're not a Dallas Cowboy fan, but you like football, right, you're going to walk into this place and go, holy cow, like, I've never seen anything like this Dude, before. I'd, like, Jerry I'd, Jones. I'd be enrolling for this event just to come, I mean, let alone the marketing and sales. I just want to go to the Cowboys facility because I see it online all the time. Dude, it's, right. it's unreal. So um, I'm going to be teaching content syndication after that. So yeah. it's not just Facebook. It's not just uh, Instagram. It's YouTube. It's LinkedIn. Like you need to be everywhere. When we started this, Jeremy said, we're live on my Facebook page, our business Facebook page, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, X. Like we're live everywhere right now. That's content syndication. And then also, how do you get people like, like if you're a roofer? And so who else is common with roofers, right? So plumbers, they go and get on the roof when they've got to snake things, right? And yeah. and uh, the gutter guys are on the roof and <laughs> siding guys are yeah. on the roof. So if I'm on a roofer and I've got an offer, then why wouldn't I get the gutter guy to share it and the siding guy to share it and, and across all their social media? And then I return that favor for them. I call that the content syndicate. Like if I'm a, a loan officer, then... I want my title company to share. I want my real estate agent to share. I want my appraiser to share. And with, that way I can get my offer out organically through multiple people that are also referrals, which will lead more. Uh, and so I'll teach you how to make offers to referral partners to join your syndicate so yeah. that you can help each other generate Yeah, I love that. Let's say if you well. sold life insurance, how do you get the health insurance broker? How do you get the car insurance you know it's all all there i, I love that that's an amazing I, i've actually I'm, I'm ready to learn that now next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go over the power of consequence questions i'm going to give you industry specific examples for the ind the industries in the audience and show you how to get the prospect to basically defend themselves on why they feel like they need to change their situation now notice i'm not telling them why they need to change because that's just going to go in one ear and out the other I'm going to show you how to get them to tell me and themselves why they feel like they need to change your situation, which is more persuasive at the end of the day. I think we all know the answer. Now, Ryan, you're up next. You're going to talk about the CRM setup for FU money. <laughs> yeah. Follow up. That stands for follow up money, but it could stand for whatever like you want. Okay. I'm like, whoa, whoa. I saw that's good. Uh, people tend to overcomplicate CRMs. And most people, most business owners, most salesmen, they don't use them the way that they should. You're, you're, whether you're in management or whether you're an owner of a company or whether you're a salesperson, your CRM should be your boss. It should be telling you who to call at what time and what to follow up with them about and how to, how you need to follow up with them. Like that should, you should go in as a salesperson, you have leads coming in, you know how to talk to them. That CRM should be your manager all day long. It should be telling you call Jeremy at 1115, call Ryan at 1230, you know, Hey, have a talk with John about the follow-up process from three days ago. And yeah. if you learn how to do that correctly, you can literally go into a job brainless. And, and what I mean is like, you don't have to go, okay, all right. So how many, so many people waste time and don't make the money they're supposed to because they're not mm -hmm. detailed in their CRM. The CRM mm -hmm. should be your boss looking over your shoulder, telling you what to do. So, and also at the end of the day, when you leave and you put in an eight or 10 hour day in the workforce, however long it is that you work, mm -hmm. it's nice to look back and be like, Oh, here are all the people I talked to and what I talked to them about. Yeah. So you feel like you actually accomplished yeah. something, even yeah. if you didn't make a sale that day. Yeah, it's 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 really you know what what I describe that is you you learn how to start playing chess, whereas all the other salespeople are still playing checkers. Yep. And part of it is not just your marketing skills, not just your sales skills, but it's all these little things like even your CRM management. It's about how you actually plan out your day. I mean, if I showed you guys in back of my career how I planned out my day, I was always freaking focused on income producing activities. And I only yeah. work eight to nine hours a day. And other people be like, oh, I work so much. I work 12 hours a day. I'm like, no, you don't. You take a two hour lunch break. You twiddle and twaddle around Facebook for an hour. Then you call your girlfriend for an hour. And then you, you know, you take a 30 minute nap. You're working like six hours a day. Like I'm working 
eight to nine straight. Like I'm focused on income producing activities all the time. I was playing chess while everybody was still playing checkers. So we're going to teach you how to do that. Then we're going to go over how do you get your prospects to close themselves? Hey, when do they make the buying decision? Is it when you ask, do you want the red one or the blue one? Is that when they decide like an option close? No, they, they said, I want the red one. That means they already decided before that they wanted the red one. It's not like they just magically decided when you use that option close or, you know, just give it a try close. So I'm going to show you how to get them to co commit and take the next step to purchase what you're offering. All right. Then we're going to go over objection handling. So you're going to bring us the top objections you get. We're going to show you how to over, help the prospect overcome them, but I'm also going to show you techniques that actually prevent those objections from even happening in the prospect's mind. That is called objection prevention. So if you want to be a top 1% salesperson, if you're a business owner and you want to scale three, four times what you are now, you're going to have to learn how to prevent a lot of the objections you lose deals from right now. Way It's so much easier to sell if you just prevent the objection from even getting in their mind. Objections are always caused by you, the salesperson. It's caused by your lack of sales ability yet. You haven't learned yet. That can change. We all learn these things. But it's because you trigger uncertainty in the prospect's brain which leads to the objections. We're going to show you how to trigger certainty, so much certainty that they just view you as the expert that they can get them the best result. All right. Once again, and then we're going to, wouldn't you say, Jeremy, okay. wouldn't you say that, that most salespeople actually plant the objections in the minds of prospects? They're like, they don't even realize they're their own worst. Like they said that because you told them to say that you've <laughs> yeah. already set them up to tell you, to say you, they weren't thinking that or going to say that, and you made them do that. You just got in your own way. You know, I, I, I think that happens a lot to a lot of salespeople. Yeah, it's so true. I'll give you an example. I, I still remember to this day, I did, I did a, a, a live on it like six months ago. I just, it came, it, it, things like riding a bike for me sometimes. I'm like, oh man, I remember when that happened. So I remember going to a boardroom. This is when I was selling B2B Enterprise. And I remember I'd met with two of their executives and they brought me in the boardroom to give the pitch, right? This is like the sixth meeting, like three months later, they're all board of directors there. So it was like 10 of them. Two of them knew anything about it. They were on board, but the other eight were like complete strangers with me. And I remember I walked in, you know, how CEOs there, they come in there and they're like, Hey, uh, we don't have much time. You know, I've got maybe, you know, an hour. Can you, can you just go through your presentation, leave some information when we tell you if we're interested? Well, if I am a, am a salesperson, and I'm like, okay, no problem. Uh, I'll go ahead and get into it. So grateful to be here. I just did what? Lowered my status. Now I view their status, that CEO status and the board status, a much higher status than me. So if I viewed them at a higher status, they're going to view me at a lower status. So I had to yep. flip that frame. And I just sat there. I'm like, oh gosh, you guys, you must have a lot of time on your hands. I've got maybe 30 minutes before my next appointment with XYZ company. Should we get started? And their whole demeanor was like, yeah. And they just view the, like, oh, you could just, sh you could see the frame shift. And I still remember from that day, there was this lady, I went through like, I don't know, 10 or 11 slides. I was on the last slide going through some numbers and she kind of looked up and she went like this with this grimace on her face. <laughs> now I'm like, okay, she either doesn't understand what I just went over. So I've triggered uncertainty. She's a decision maker. Okay. Am I going to take the chance of leaving this boardroom? And then she starts planning a seed in everybody else's mind why they shouldn't buy. Does she have an objection? Like what's going on? She went like this. She's like, like she didn't understand something. So I just stopped and I'm like, Hey, Hey Gretchen. That's her name. Which is, Hey Gretchen. Hey, I noticed when, when I just, when I went through that last slide, you seemed a bit hesitant. What's, what, what, what's behind that? Just so I understand. And she's like, well, I really like what you just had to say, but I'm not sure how it would work with. And then I found out the concern. And then guess what? I was there to help prevent that from happening when I left. See, I got that resolved before I left because if I had left and they had that objection, I'm dead. So we're going to show yeah. you how to prevent objections from even happening. Okay, once again, let's drop the link, Ryan. I've got to get off here in a couple of minutes. I know you've got a meeting. It's getting late where you're at there in Dallas, Texas. The event will be next Friday and Saturday, beautiful Dallas, Texas, at uh, Mr. Stuman's. Uh, offices there that hold about 300 of you. How many tickets do we even have left? Because I know we were like 87, 88% sold out before I even did this live. 
I'm not sure the exact number. Uh, that's kind of Sean's era, but we've we've we don't have a whole lot left. Um, you okay. know, we've been selling this for a couple couple months. So, yeah. uh, and my team's been on the phones pretty heavy behind this because yeah. they're excited to come learn for you too. My 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 team learners are earners, bro, and they they always want to get better. So they're yeah. they're like, hey, we got to make Jeremy happy by getting all these people in here so that we can come and sit down and learn from them too. You know, so. Uh, yeah, let's do that. I know that I know there's a virtual version. Uh, I would be in person. Like, hey, look, if I, I recommend learned, being in person too, you're just going to learn more if you're in person. There is a virtual, like, if you've broken both legs and your doctor said, if you get on a plane, you're going to have a blood clot and you're going to pass away and you cannot take a bus, a train, or an automobile, then we have a virtual option just for you. But that is the only way you should be up there on virtual. If you cannot move your bed fast, you can't move, you're paralyzed. Then you get on that virtual. If you're a human, if you're not any of those, get there, get on a plane. I can assure you, you know, we did an event here that we announced like three weeks before. We had people flying from like Australia and freaking New Zealand two weeks later. Wow. Can you imagine wow. being in like, you know, Phoenix or Salt Lake or New York or Florida? Be like, oh, you know, Dallas is too far away. That's a two hour flight. So you can learn. That's a two hour flight. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know how I'm going to make it. So get there, Rod. I'm excited, man. Uh, really excited. But, but the people in the room, it's not just Jeremy and I either. There's, there, I know a lot of the people that are attending, like there's great people that you can make. Imagine I'm teaching the content syndication and you look to your right and you look to your left and you're like, these dudes are perfect for that. And they get the concept while we're in the room together. We should be doing this together. Like just think of the power in that, the power of like maybe you're a real estate agent and and there's loan officers in the room and you can trade business back and forth or there's PNC insurance agents in the room and they can, you know, and you're a roofer, like all the different people that are good. These yeah. people are wanting to become better. They're wanting to make more money. They're wanting to get better at sales. They're wanting to get more clients. Don't you think you should rub elbows with you? Even if you didn't learn anything from Jeremy and I, which would be impossible, you'd have to sleep the whole time. But <laughs> but don't just being in the room with those people and making yeah. those connections could yeah. change the game for somebody too. You know? Every every event that I've gone to forever, I've always walked out of there making more because of the connections I made. Had I not gone to certain events. There were certain marketers we met that we learned from that help us scale our business just because they're at the event and then we hired them for consulting and boom, have we not gone to the freaking events? Cause we were just like, Oh, I'd rather just watch TV on Friday. We just wouldn't be where we're at. So if you want to, if you want to learn how to market more, get more leads and you want to sell more of your product services, your thing, you might want to show up to this event. I highly doubt you're going to walk away from the two day event marketing less and selling less going to be pretty hard for you not to sell more and be much better at marketing by the time you get out of the two day. Ryan, we'll see you here in about a week and a half. I'm excited, man. Yeah. I'll see you uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night. Which night Perfect. are you coming in? I'm coming in Wednesday. I'll see you Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday. See you then. See you Thank Wednesday you, afternoon. We dropped the link about 150 times. We love you guys. Get there to the event. If you want to sell and market more, Ryan, see you in a week. Talk to everybody soon. Thanks for being on everybody.